Hello guys, CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another Unity and Timer Dimensions video. This is episode 2, and today we're going to be finishing up the rest of the dimensions and work on the dimension shift, so that should be interesting. I'm also going to add the scientific notation, get that down and over with, and finish this getting antimatter per second. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, comment down below, and all your suggestions, feedback, and all that. So subscribe to my channel if you're new, turn on those notifications, and check out my Patreon if you want to support me, or you can join my channel membership if you want to do that. And Heavy, if you're here, welcome to the video. Thank you for all your motivation and for making such an amazing game. Anyways, let's get on with it. I'd like to start off by thanking my Patreons, Cameron, Nathan, Peek That, Andrew, and Tommy. Thank you guys very much. Anyways, let's get on with it. Okay, so let's hop into, uh, let's make a methods. I'm going to make an, okay, so the scientific notation method that we did last time, uh, it's going to be different, right? So let's create a class or an empty script called... Uh, I'm going to call this extendables, right? So what I'm doing here, instead of having a method wrap around a variable, I'm going to have it extend it. So I'll show you what that looks like. And I think this is really cool and helpful, and it kind of saves a lot of uh, um, a lot of typing, I guess. You can just simply add on to the end of the variable instead. Okay, so we are in our extendables. Uh, we don't need a mono... This doesn't need to be a mono behavior, because we are going to create a namespace instead. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, extendables, right, and uh, let's rename, I'm going to rename the script to methods, okay, but the me the namespace is going to be called extendables, and the class is going to be um, methods, okay, so we're going to make the scientific notation, so how we do this is public static uh, string, no, yeah, string, okay, and then we're going to just call this like note or notate. We can just type notate, but I think I, I don't know. We can make this as short as possible, but I'm going to do notate. Okay. So now what we put in here is this double num. Okay. Now we can't use this because we need to make this a static class. Okay. Now the cool thing is that we will be able to apply this at the end of um, our variables if we uh, import this namespace, okay? So, uh, let's just return an empty string for now. I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so let's go to our dimensions. Actually, let's start with our game controller first. Okay, so at the top, you just put using the extendables, right? That's the name of our namespace that we created. And now, let's we let's say we want, uh, we have our antimatter right here, right? So all you gotta do here is type in dot notate, and that is it. Now, how does this work? Now, you can't just put this in front of a float, right? So if we have a var uh, temp equals 4f for a float, and then we do um, print, for example, temp dot notate. Now, this isn't going to work because this is a float. Now, if we copy and paste this, and just change the type to float, we can keep the same name as well, which is nice. Uh, what did I do? Oh, oops, actually I put it outside of this. So if we copy and paste this and replace the type as a float, we can keep this name here, and now we should be able to do it for floats, right? So that's really cool how we can do this, but we don't need to do that like that. So, and we're not gonna use floats for now. Okay, I'm also gonna grab the the break infinity stuff real quick. Okay, so I'm in my crypto clickers uh, right now, but I'm gonna copy and paste the big double and big double editor. So copy, and we're gonna go to my uh, assets in Window Explorer and Finder for Mac users. Let's see, where are we? Okay, I'm just like not focused. And paste them in here. And now we should be able to use break infinity. So let's hop in, and we don't need any of this, okay? For now, we probably will eventually, but we don't need any of this. So now we can import using break infinity. Perfect. So now we can replace the the doubles that we have, and let's just uh, make that a big double, big double. And now you see we can't add big doubles to a double, so we gotta change everything else in here. So let's import our 
uh, break infinity namespace and replace all of our variables that are doubles as big doubles. Okay. And that should fix itself. Yeah. Not that yet. No? Oh, okay. So now we're, we gotta replace the math functions too, or the math methods, the math classes. So it's big double dot pal instead. And honestly, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna type uh, using static break infinity uh, dot big double, because what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to get rid of this math dot. And now it's using big doubles dot pow by default without having to type big double dot pow. So you see now this is grayed out. It means it's redundant. So we can just redundant. So we can just get rid of it. And that makes it a little easier to type. We don't have to type big double every single time. And we're going to have to do the same thing for here. We need to replace all the big doubles. I mean, all the doubles. Same thing with our costs. And get rid of all these. Uh, the, math dot okay and that replaces everything I think we're error free now and we can also change that uh, okay so now in here we do need to uh, take in break infinity namespace the reason why is because we need to uh, set our notate to big double instead so then now we will do that okay and yeah right here Okay, so let's do our uh, scientific notation real quick. So uh, we have our var exponent, and that is going to be equal to uh, floor. Also, I'm going to add in static break infinity dot big double as well. Okay, so now I can just do floor. Uh, I think it's log base 10 uh, absolute num. Okay, now this I've explained how to do this in my scientific notation video, so if you haven't checked that out, I also have a actually I think I've yeah, I've explained it in a few of my videos, but check make sure you check that out if you don't understand. So we have our exponent here and our mantisa, which is the decimal in front of the exponent to the left, is simply uh pow. Okay. There's num divided by num divided by 10 to the power of exponent. Okay. There we go. And now we need to join it all together. Okay. So if, I don't know, we're just going to do a question mark operator. So um, num greater than 1000, you know, greater than or equal than 1000. Also, I think I'm going to change this floor to because the issues I've had in the past is uh, the 10.00e whatever, you know. It doesn't just shift up to the next one. It just stays like this. Okay, so I need to fix that. And I believe that happens because it, in behind the scenes, it's really 9.995, I think. I really don't know why that happens. So I think I'm just going to have to truncate it. Let's try that. Let's try truncate. Okay. Yeah, that seems makes more sense. Okay, so if num is greater than or equal than 1,000, then we're going to uh, make a string right here with the uh, dollar sign. Let me zoom in. Um, okay, let's combine the mantisa and the exponent. Okay, and now what I'm going to do with the exponent here is I'm going to do n uh, here. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do n0, okay? We don't need decimals for our exponent. However, this n0, it's going to format as a comma. So if we get really large numbers, we can see it as 1e3000 like that, okay? Or e3.4 million like that, okay? So it really... Really cool way of formatting it for us. And for Mantisa, we just need to see two decimals. And obviously, I can add a setting. Um, I can just do int decimal. No, it's a variable. I can just put decimal right here. And what I can do is add... Um, I can add a string here. 
dollar sign f deck. Okay. I don't this will work. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think this will work. We can type two string. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's the only way around it. So basically here, we're just going to type in our decimal for how many uh, decimals we want to. We'll merge it with F2 or, or the F. So if we have two, it's going to show two decimals. And by default, we have two. So we're just going to set this equal to two. So we don't have to put anything. And if we want to change it, we can just type in a number. So this is called a default parameter. So if we set it equal to two, and if we don't put anything in there, then it'll be set to two by default. So that's the really cool thing about that. So we don't have to type two for every single one when we can just really put equals two. Because there will be cases where we want to see more decimals than usual. Okay, and we're going to want to do the same thing with here. So this is going to be num. Um, yeah, this is just num to string. And we're going to do the exact same thing here, except we're going to replace F with N. So we can get a comma. And actually, what I'm going to do, actually, that's fine. I was going to make it so that it starts showing up at a million, but let's do that. One, two, three, one. Okay, so now it's gonna start showing up at 10 million, okay? And I wanna show you what it does with the commas. I think it's cool. Okay, so now we need to add it to everything, unfortunately. Uh, oh, I wanna try something. I wanna try, let's see, let's go to our big double right here. I wanna see if I can um, use extendable in here and add it to the two string because I think that'll be really useful. So let's try using extendables in here and let's find our two string and override it right here. Um, okay, format dot big double. Uh, is this a string? Yeah, let's try dot notate. Will this work? No, this is a string. Okay, I'm trying this. This dot notate. Will this work? I don't know. Um, cause I, I don't, I don't, I want to see if I can try it without adding it to every single thing. If so, that would be freaking awesome. Cause I just want to like only apply the scientific notate or this notation to big doubles. So who knows if this will work? If it does, then, oh my gosh, that's a lifesaver. We'll try. Oh, what's wrong here? N. It doesn't look at our N. Okay. So it's trying to do the two string here. Oh, Okay, so it looks like format. Okay, I have an idea. We're going to comment all this out. I don't know what the format provider does. However, I think I'm just going to replace it with string format. Let's take this as an int. Uh, well, we can't cast this. We just have to get rid of the... Uh, where is this N coming from, though? I think I'm just gonna have to do do it like this. I'm gonna try this, okay? Now this probably won't work. If it doesn't, then I think I'm just gonna have to go with my original plan. It's taking a long time to import now. Hmm, I doubt it'll work. Oh, yeah, what is this? Oh, Unity's like completely frozen. Oh, that's not good. Unity is like frozen. Okay, I somehow got out of it. I don't know how, but I did. All right, never mind. Screw it. We're going back to what our original plan was. So I'm not gonna me I'm not gonna mess with anything here. So this now we have to uh, do dot donate dot notate, which is okay. It's fine. Also, I need to calculate this antimatter per second. Okay, so I'm gonna eventually do that in here. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Okay, so let me replace everything. Or not replace, but add on to here I need uh using extendable real quick okay now I'm gonna add notate all oh, right <laughs> so uh um okay so see this is n one right so I'm just gonna put in one for here okay so the decimal is one okay so here now remember you have to add parentheses around all the variables you can't just add dot uh, uh, dot notate to the very end of it because of all the multiplication that's happening inside here. So make sure you uh, wrap that around with parentheses, uh, parentheses and then add the notate at the end. And I think that's it. Okay. 
So now we will get into the habit of using Notate. And I think we're good. So let's try it out. Is Unity still frozen? Seriously? I thought I force quit. Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. No, Unity is not frozen. <laughs> Goof. <sighs> we're still getting this error. Go away. Okay. Um, Unknown string format. N. So it doesn't... Oh, man. They don't have N. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so let's see. What's this? Format exponential. Interesting. Format digits. Okay, so it looks like it doesn't even have it yet. So I'm going to add on to it. I'm going to add an N. Okay. So let's see. What does this do? And I... Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Too fixed. Ah, oh, this sucks. Um, you know what? I'm not going to bother. That's just, no. I don't really feel like doing that. No. <laughs> Maybe another day. All right, screw it. Well, we got to go back to F. That stinks. I really wanted to use N. Okay. Well, now we should be good to go. And also, that means we could probably use that two-string thing that we were using. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, okay. So, which means I'm going to... Oh, we're still getting this error. Why? Where are we getting this N? Oh, right here. Okay, this should be F0. Um, okay, and also, I'm going to make this at 1,000 now. Okay, because that was... I. I don't know. I thought it would look cool with the commas for a little bit, but I guess not. You need, or, yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. This looks fine. Cool. We have our scientific notation. Everything looks correct. We also need to do that percent thing, so I'll get there eventually. Uh, and the per second. Okay, well, well, we've already tested this phase, so I think we should just start moving on to the per second. So, we need to start converting everything into arrays, because this is not acceptable here. Alright, so now we're going to go to our data class, and we're going to create a big double array. We already know the size of it, so we're just going to, oh, it needs to be an array. Dimensions. Nah, I'm just going to call it lowercase dimensions. And this is going to be a new big double, size A. Okay. We can get rid of this. We're going to get quite some errors. And let's do the same thing for the rest. So we have our dim boost. And our dimension levels. So. Okay. And I'm going to replace this with... Uh, dimensions count, dimension count, dimension levels. Okay, and we can honestly just get rid of all this. And in our data class, we're gonna make sure they start off with fresh new arrays like this. All right, and now in our dimensions, we're gonna see a bunch of errors, so that's okay because we're going to uh, transform this into a for loop. So we're still using four dimensions right now, So, but I at least want to get this for loop started. So we're going to start with var i equals 1. Okay. And the reason why we're doing 1, actually, let's see, what's this? Um, we can start at 2 because of this right here. And I should have made this an array. Okay, so this is first dimension. So we need to start at 0. Okay. And i is uh, less than, let's see, we're going to do, our first dimension is 0, 1, 2. So we're stopping at 3, we're at 2. And, all right, let's take this. Now we just replace this with dimensions. Dimension count at index i. Okay, so now dimension production is 2 more than i. So we're going to do i plus 2. Okay, and that should be good to go. We can delete these ones. And we'll build this. We'll keep adding on as we have more production. And also, we will stop this at 8 because we don't produce any 8. So it will stop at 6. All right. So now let's do our dimension. So I'm going to add a string up here. P 
public string array, and this is going to be the dimension names, I guess. It's going to be a new string. It's going to be a size 8. And actually, we can just predefine this in the start method. So we only need to do it once. And I don't think we have a start method, so let's create one. Private void start. Okay, and now dimension names is equal to a new array. And we're just going to put first. Second. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Okay, so third, fourth, fifth. Okay, so we have our dimension names, and now we will access this all in a for loop. And this should be all in the same for loop. Now, this is not going to be in the same one as this one, just because we're going to be accessing more. Um, we're not. We're going to be accessing all eight. Rather, this one's going to be accessing accessing um, the first seven. Okay, and so we do this by doing var i equals zero. I is less than eight, and i plus plus. Okay, and in here we're just gonna grab everything and put it in this for loop. All right, so we're kind of in a messy situation here, but we want to replace this dimensions as i. And actually, since we only have four dimensions, let's just keep this at four. Okay, and we're gonna replace this first with uh, dimension names at index i. All right, and uh, this dimension, this dim boost right here, is uh, just dim boost right here. And actually, I think I'm just gonna replace the name with dimension boost just to keep it consistent. Dimension. Actually, I could just call it dim levels and dim counts. Nah doesn't have to be short. Uh, and dim boosts at, uh, at index i. Okay, cool. So now we can delete all of these. And now the info text. Uh, instead of first dimensions, it's just going to be dimension count at index i. Okay, and dimension levels, that is going to be dimension levels at index i. Perfect, now we can delete this. And for the cost, this is simply, oh, we need to replace the index here. No, we just, this is simply just i plus one, okay? Alrighty. Uh, let's see what else. We have until 10 cost, okay? So this is also i plus one. Uh, minus 10, oh, minus. Uh, I plus one and dimension levels. Let's replace that. And we can delete the rest. Okay. And now two more. Okay. This should be pretty easy. Oh my. What was that? Just got to replace this with I plus one and delete the rest. I plus one. Honestly, I should make a variable for this right here. Should we do it? I think we should. Let's see, where does this end? Right here. Yeah, let's make um let's make a method variable. So this is public big double dimension until ten cost. Okay? And this will require a parameter of or an integer parameter. And this is simply going to return all of this. Uh, it's pretty easy. Let's add that var. Nah, we only need data once, so I'm just going to add the, what is it, game dot? Yeah, game dot data. Or is it main? Nope, that's fine. Okay, and now id is i instead, and just like that. And also we can make this into an uh, expression body with the arrow. Cool, so now we can use this uh, dimension until 10 cost, and we'll just replace all of this. And... Now it's not an array, so we gotta add the parentheses i. Okay, we'll do the same thing here. Get rid of all this mess, and that completely shortens it. So we shorten it a lot. 
Now, remember that huge block of code? It's now just a simple array. And actually, eventually, once we start adding more tabs, I will have the, this user interface only be updating when we're looking at it, okay? For the cost is only when we're buying it, okay? So we'll do some optimization videos and stuff like that because this game can get very, very heavy, especially if we're doing this in Unity. Um, otherwise, I think we're good for arrays. Let's start with dimension shift. Oh, no, this production thing. Uh, okay, I see what's wrong here. So we need to access dimension count at index i minus zero. No, it's id minus one. Okay, because we start at one. Now, I should have been consistent, but it's okay. I'll just do id minus one. And do the same thing for the rest. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this switch statement because we really don't need this. Okay, so we get rid of that. And there we go. Much shorter. And we can even probably get rid of this uh, method now. So we can just... Uh, do I want to? I mean, I already have it. Let's see. What are our levels? I think I can just do this. Count. Where's our count? Dims is count, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just get rid of this. I think it's kind of pointless. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of that. Perfect. Also level. Let's yeah, this is level. Cool. Now, it looks a little messy, but it's actually pretty short and simple and it's because this inverted uh if statement is not very friendly with us. And yeah, but it just it doesn't look very neat, but it's a I don't know. I I like it. Let's we can invert it if we want to. So it looks like this. Uh, let's just keep it. I just hate seeing these dumb blue lines. So, okay. Uh, okay, we need to do our antimatter per second. And this is basically just going to sum up the production of one. That's pretty much it. So we actually probably don't even need this right here. Okay, so we just need to access this in the, in here. So now we can finally replace this with, uh, let's see, we need to get our dimensions in here. So let's, let's add our dimensions class. Okay. And now we'll just do dimensions dot dimension production uh, one. And don't forget the, uh, the notate. Okay. And now we should be good. I need to do save system fast, probably after this, after Galaxy at least, because that's going to take forever to test. Oh, we have some errors. What's going on? Oh, the dimension cost. Woo! So now I'm actually going to create some more arrays here while we're at it. Okay? So what we can do here is create a public big double array. And this will be called dimension base cost. Okay? And we will predefine this in the start method. And we'll do the same thing for the cost molt. So, which is this right here. And this will be cost molt. We can honestly make these doubles, but I really don't want to be inconsistent yet. Because we can change these types whenever we want to. Okay. And this will also be able to replace our switch statement, or switch case. And, okay. So let's just simply take this and return base cost at index ID and times the, no, this is the, yeah, that's right, times the cost molt to the power of dim boost, which is data.dimensionBoost at ID. What's wrong here? Oh, I see. We don't need that here. Cool, so now we can get rid of our switch case and get rid of this other return. And there we go, it's pretty simple. Okay, also we can get rid of this temporary va uh, variable because we only use data once, which means we can turn this to an expression body. Okay, so we have two really short pieces of code right here, or methods, just one liner, so it's awesome. I love that you can do this. And I think production is good as is. We will add on to this. We need to, oh shoot, I deleted our base cost. Mm. 
<sighs> okay, hold on. We're going to do this. We're just going to copy this. and There we go. Okay, so now in our start method, we need to... Let's see, our base costs. We're going to create a new big double. Uh, we can, yeah, just a new big double array. And let's see, let's paste this below. We're going to have a bunch of red lines here, but ignore it for now. And we will just start with 10, 100, 24, 26. Okay, and we'll add on to this once we finish the other dimensions. And we also want to do our dimension cost molt. Okay, and that is 23, 24. 25, 26. Okay, and delete this, and we should be set. Okay, no more errors. No more. Okay, so we're getting errors here. Index was out of the bounds of the array. I don't know why. I believe it's because of dimension cost. It's the way we're accessing it. I don't know. Where are we accessing this? Let's see. It's one of our arrays, maybe. Oh, no reference. Okay, maybe that's why. So we need to get our dimensions manager in here. Hopefully this will work. Okay, that fixed one of our issues. We're still getting uh, out of bounds here. Oh, I see here. It's something to do with our dimension cost. Okay. Well, the reason why this isn't an issue now is because of... We were doing that plus one, right? Because of our switch case was based on... Zero, er, one uh, index one based index instead of zero. So now what we can do here for our cost, we can get rid of this plus one. Okay, since we are accessing directly to the array, we can just do uh, i. All right, and this should fix our issue. Also, don't forget to save often. It's pretty important. Okay, I've lost hours. I've lost days of progress because of me being an idiot. Also, GitHub is very helpful too. Uh, another one of these. Okay, let's see. Where is the origin of this? It's the until 10 cost. Okay, so you see how, okay, I forgot. We have one more plus one here. Same here. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to these errors. So if you immediately sit index out of range, it's like, oh, it's an array error. Okay, and if you just change something like this, then you should know that you got to fix the plus ones like I did. It's problem solving. Okay. Uh, I cannot buy now. What's wrong here? What's wrong here? Okay, so our game isn't frozen. That's good. Uh, why can I not buy anything? I don't know. Oh, buy dimension. What's this? Why is it grayed out? Is this button like completely gone? Oh, I see here. Okay. Now, remember, our dimension cost is based on ID. So we start at zero, right? So basically, this is trying to buy a second dimension. So don't forget to shift all the buttons to. To zero, one, two, and three. Okay, and save it, and let's play. And we should be able to buy our first dimension now. Perfect. Oh, man, another one of these. Are, oh, what is wrong? Okay, so our dimen Okay, so you see, we do the minus one thing here. We gotta. Uh, I need to pay closer attention, but it's okay. We all make these elementary mistakes. Okay, so just make sure you pay attention to how you're accessing the arrays. Okay, it's very important. You cannot be out of bounds, or else you'll get these kind of annoying errors. Okay, finally, and we got our antimatter per second going. Also, I'll do tick speed. After dimension shifts. Okay, I'll probably be third episode. I don't know. These are fun. I just want to keep pumping these videos out, but I want to be consistent at the same time. And it's they're pretty long, so. Uh, I still need to make the the buy until ten. So I'm a little. I'm running a little behind. I should have done a little more previous video, but it's okay. Yeah. Let's see if we. Yeah, that won't buy anything. Okay, let's buy this one right here. Let it start producing. Perfect. Also, we have two decimals here, right? And antimatter dimensions, we only have zero. So let's fix that real quick. And that is located, uh, where is that? Right here? No, it's the info text. Okay, so let's put this as zero in our notate method and it should fix that. Now you can change this to whatever you want. I'm just gonna do zero 
just to keep it consistent. Also, and I think antimatter is a whole number as well. Okay, I had to load an incognito for a new save. Yep, oh, it's one decimal. Interesting, okay. Well, let's make sure that happens. Also, we got a lot of progress from doing nothing. Cool. So, I'm gonna, oh man. I'm gonna go to my game controller here and set notate to one. I think our per second is exactly the same here. Ah, oh, I closed it. I'm just gonna trust that it's uh, one decimal. Okay. And I should make this, oh yeah, it already is one. No? Oh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay, and we could, well, so we should make it so we can change it in the settings too. Okay, so let's keep buying these. So now we should make in two per second. Cool, I like how this turns out. Beautiful. Uh, okay, I think we should start dimension shift, which means I loaded the game at the perfect rate. Okay, so by default, uh, do we still have our note document open? No, we don't. Okay, let me open that real quick. Okay, so our base cost is 20, right? We know, okay, so I remember, obviously, it's 20 until we get to 5, right? So let's just buy another one. Yeah, see, it's fifth dimension. Okay, so you see, we see the pattern here. So we need to start getting these other dimensions here, right? So let's start, uh, let's start creating these costs. And I believe, actually, let's keep playing right now. I'm going to skip forward to the fifth dimension. Also, if we haven't noticed yet, dimension shift uh, multiplies the first one by two, right? So we'll see what happens if we get the um, the other one, okay? So let's add it to our notes. Okay, so we have unlocked the fifth dimension. So our base cost is 1e9, and I, and I predict our cost molt is 1e7, and our base production is the same, uh, plus 0.1 per second. And our next cost is going to be, I said 1e7, right? Yeah, so that's 1e16. Okay, so I will continue this. Okay, so we're going to buy one. And let's see, is our production. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because we have tick speed, so it should be every five seconds. So, one. Two. No, it's, we guess start. Zero. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Yeah, about that. Okay. And so we know the production's correct. Our cost. Okay, so I'm going to speed it up. All right, I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so our, now our production is roughly four per second. Okay. Just a, a tad bit above that. Okay, so now I'm going to speed up. So now I don't have all day right now, and I've uh, I got to eat dinner soon. So I'm going to kind of cheat in. I hate to do this. I hate, I don't, I don't want people to do this, but just for the sake of moving on with the video, I'm just going to, oh yeah, our cost, mo it, or yeah, our cost is uh, 2017. Okay, so it looks like, hmm. Okay, so I guess the cost molt is 1E. Yeah, so it's, okay, so we're starting to get some different scaling here. So it looks like Maybe the next one will be 1E11, I'm guessing. It'll be either 1E10 or 1E11. That's my guess. Okay, so I'm going to buy this and see what happens. 1E25. Right, where is it? Right here. Is that 8? Yeah, that is. Okay. So we have a constant cult. Cult. <laughs> Molt of 1E8. And I'm, I'm going to uh, buy another dimension shift. Okay, so we'll see what happens with this. So now we have a 4 times here. Okay, and we unlock this. We unlock the next one. Okay, so this will be cost five, cost six. Okay, so this unlocks dim six. And now the first dim is four. And now the second dimension, I believe, is two. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to kind of figure this out. We're going to have to make an equation for this. Okay, let's get on with the dimension shift okay i'm gonna make these private because we don't, don't think we need to access these anywhere else for now uh okay so dimension shift hooray here comes one of the first struggles i'm probably gonna deal with also i think i wrote down something 
I forgot to do. Maybe not? No, I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay. Uh, also, ignore these. This is really dumb right here because that's just dumb right here. Because if we're gonna add a new array, it's gonna be an empty array. We're not creating a new one every time, right? Okay, so just leave these here. Ignore this stupid yellow line. Because this is not like, I don't know, Unity protected, where if you compile on a normal basis, it will create this um, array based on what's in the constructor, while in Unity it doesn't. It only does that once, which is on the first time you load it, or create the variable, okay? But once we start with the save system, it kind of just doesn't work that way. Okay, so we're going to calculate, we're going to, uh, so instead of levels here, we're going to create uh, shifts, okay? Dimension shifts. Now, we need to also have a separate variable for how many shifts we have. So we're just going to put shift boost, okay? And then down here, I think we're just going to make a big double here public big double dimension shifts, okay? And also this will be a type of big double, and we can just copy and paste this down here. Replace the U short with the big double. Okay, and dimension shifts down here will be set equal to zero, okay? So we need to somehow calculate what this is. And this will be a little weird, because again, we're, we're working in a ladder, Okay, so let's go to our dimensions here, and I'm just going to create a temporary, uh, I'm just going to create, how am I doing this? Okay, I think I'm just going to create a big double dimension shift boost in here, a method, a big double method, and I'm going to calculate it in here, okay? And basically, this boost is based on the current one so we need so we're gonna need to make a ladder here okay so obviously by default it's gonna be big double dot pow uh, game dot data game dot data dot dimension shifts right ah no dimension shifts yeah right so by default it's like this however we need to subtract this by one every time we have an ID right here okay uh, also, this is 2 to the power of the shifts, and now we're going to subtract this by ID, okay? So, the first dimension is 0, right? So, we're not subtracting anything, okay? So, once we have our first dimension shift, uh, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, okay? So, our, only our first dimension is going to get that boost. Now, for our second dimension, we're subtracting 1 because our ID is 1, okay? So, we want to make sure this boost does not go negative, Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we check if this is greater than, well, we're not going to do anything here, okay? So, actually, why am I doing this like, why am I doing it like this? I think I should just do, do it like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's remove this ID. We're just going to do this in a for loop. Okay, so we're going to take this. We're going to make a for loop for var i equals zero. And since we really want to mess with the first, we're going to want to mess with the first five dimensions now and eventually eight. Let's actually start with four. Okay. And in here for our for loop, we are going to put, let's have a var data equals game dot data. Okay. So data dot dimension shift boost is going to be equal to power uh, power or two to the power of dimension shifts uh, minus i okay and we all want to access this in our array so we do add index i okay so now we want to check to make sure if this is greater than zero or not okay so I'm gonna make a variable inside this for loop okay so now we only need to calculate this once so we can just do if this temp boost is less than one, okay? Less than one, then we're gonna use one instead, okay? So the boost is one by default. Otherwise, it's temp boost, okay? So now we need to be able to use this right here. So, uh, where what's going on here? Okay. Um, K 
Okay, so we have our dimension boost here. So we need to multiply this. So dimension times that. We also need to multiply this pal right here. Okay, so we're kind of getting to the point where we need to start accessing things in methods. So let's create another method called private big double dimension boost. Okay, and ID. And actually this can probably be accessed in a expression body. And we were gonna take this right here, move it up here, multiply. Okay, we just need to multiply this right here but with our sh uh, with our shift boost, okay? So we're just gonna do game dot data or like that, and replace the i with id. Okay, so now we can use dimension boost down here, like that, and put i as our parameter. Okay, so let's see where else do we use this boost? Cause uh, we use it in other places. Uh, we use it up here. Wherever we add to our production, right? Yeah, our dimension production method. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to replace this boost with this right here. And now instead of ID, we're going to do ID minus 1. Okay. And now we're just going to replace all of these. Cool. And we can honestly just like, get rid of these. Okay, so what we're going to do is get rid of the switch case. So we can just do if, or yeah, we can do this in a question mark operator. Okay, so if ID is equal to 1, then we're going to return this first statement up here. Otherwise, we are going to return this one right here. Okay, and we do that by the colon and like that. Okay, we can get rid of the rest of this and make sure this is right. Yep. Whew. And we can make this a question mark operator. I'd rather have a question mark operator than and just type game a few times rather than wasting a few lines of code just like that. Cool. See all these expression bodies? That is just so helpful and it looks pretty in me, or in my opinion. Okay, so now we have our uh, dimension boost when we shift. So we need to actually shift, okay? So under our by dimension, we're gonna do a public void um, dimension shift. We're just gonna, actually, I'm just gonna call this by dimension shift, even though we're not really by, I mean, we are buying, I guess. By dimension shift, okay? So making the cost is probably gonna be one of the harder things to do. Um, okay, so... We need to have a cost, okay? So we're gonna have a public big double dimension, dimension shift cost, okay? And basically, this is just gonna equal to, here, let's not do this in expression body yet. Okay, so return, let's see, game.data, no, what's this? Game.data. What is wrong? What is, what is it doing? Oh, I see now. <laughs> okay, game dot data dot dimension shifts. Okay. Uh, so let's see. We have our first one is six, seven, eight, and then we start scaling after we buy the first three. Okay. So once we buy one, we get six, seven, eight. So I think if dimension shifts is greater than three then we're going to start our cost thing. Otherwise, it's going to be... Um, so I don't know what it is right now. So I'm just going to keep it as 20. And now, let's see, this is going to say, oh, you can just remove this, right? But we want to find out what this actually is scaling to because we can just calculate it. And we can make this into an expression body. Okay, so now we can use this in here. So if uh, we need to somehow calculate uh, which dimension shift we have, and I think the only way I can possibly think of this is using a switch statement, okay? So in here, we're going to create a, a var data equals game.data variable. And 
we're going to use uh, switch data dot dimension shifts. Okay. And basically, if we have no dimension shifts, that's case zero. Also, the problem here is that, um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much this can only be used, uh, it, it doesn't support big double. So here we're just going to cast this as an int. Okay. And alrighty. Let's see here. I'm only going to do this for if, yeah, okay. I'm just going to do this. If dimension shifts is less than or equal than three, okay, then we're going to use the switch statement right here. Otherwise, we will do all the calculations below. Alrighty. So now if and okay. Can we get rid of this right here? We can. Okay. So if dimension shifts, no, 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 no. If data dot dimension count at index, so let's see, three is our fourth dimension. So if dimension count three is greater than or equal than uh, dimension shift cost, then we're going to reset all this. Okay. And in here, I'm just going to make a method called avoid reset shift. Okay, or it's actually just going to be called a shift reset because we only want to reset certain things in here. And we will use this right here in our, in the future when we get galaxies. Okay, so basically we're going to create, a, uh, we're basically just going to go to our data and reset all of this. Okay. Okay. And, oh, we don't want to reset, we, wanna, we only want to reset, um, let's see. I don't think we want to reset shift boost. Yeah, we don't want to. So basically, to reset these, we're just going to create a brand new array, which basically wipes everything, sets them back to zero. And we also want to set our antimatter back to 10. OK? Cool. So now we will do a shift reset. Perfect. Um, <laughs> also, we need to add a break. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, we need to add to our uh, dimension shifts. Right. And we can actually add this to. Do, no, I don't want to do that. We'll do it here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for. <laughs> Ugh, this is not fun. Also, I don't think we need this ID here. I don't know why I added that. So let's just, we can shorten this later on, but let's start with the first three or first four. Okay, so dimension four, dimension five, six, seven, and we also need eight, right? Yeah. Okay, so that means this dimension shift has to be greater than four, and this has to be less than or equal than four. Whew. Again, we can really shorten this. We can even probably just uh, see. I want to be okay. I want to be able to use this in the future. So let's just move this out here. Let's call this a public void shift reset. Our data equals game dot data. Okay, and now in here, I want to do. And this is just going to be called a reset. Just, yeah, this we're just going to shift in here. I don't know. And I'm basically just going to grab this here. Okay. Uh, we need to calculate this int. So we're going to do int id and put this id in here. Okay. Cool. Now we can shorten this a lot. And eventually probably much more. Okay. So now we only need to do this. Can we break in here and then get rid of this? I don't know. That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that, I figured. Six, five, four, three. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And honestly, we can make this cost start to scale out. I don't know. We'll adjust all of this once we start getting used to this layout. And honestly, I don't want to start with the dimension shift afterwards. Okay. So, let's see, where are we at? I think we should start... 
I think we should start expanding our our dimensions to eight because we're gonna need it, and it'll really suck. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So another thing we need to do. Yes, this is a lot of work, and this is a, a freaking long video. But there's a there's so much to do in this game. <laughs> it's crazy. It may seem so simple, but there's actually a lot. We need to determine if the if our dimension is unlocked or not. So we're gonna create a bool array. Dimension unlocked. Okay. And this will be a new bool, size eight. And we're gonna add this to our constructor. Okay. Dimension unlocked. Dimensions unlocked. Okay, so now in our dimensions here, we need to do uh, we need to add this right here. So and if well, I mean, we can just hide the we can just hide the dimension anyway. So let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna add a yet another array. We're gonna add a game object array this time, and this is gonna be the dimension game object. Okay, and this will be a new game object array. That's a size eight. Okay, and let's see if we can handle this. Uh, mm, we only need it for like. I'm just gonna add it because we know by default the first four our are um are unlocked, right? So we're just gonna set this unlocked array data dot game dot data dot unlocked is equal to new array. Hmm. This is really weird. Because I'm trying to think, do we ever have a point in time where we never see the first through four dimensions? I don't think so. So this is just going to be a size four bool instead. Because we only need to unlock five through eight. But we do, uh, we do have to eventually hide them. Yeah. So we do need eight. Okay, cool. That, uh, that works out, but still. Um, so they're all false right now, right? So we're going to update this in here. Okay, so we're going to do dimension game objects at index i dot game object dot set active. And we're going to make this equal to data dot dimensions unlocked at index i. Simple as that, right? So now we need to do this, uh, we need to manage this in here. Okay, so not, now by default, obviously, we need to make sure. Um, Okay, so we're going to set uh, if dimensions, okay, so if dimensions at index 0 is false, then we're going to set it to true, because it's always going to be true, right? That's just one of those things that's always true, okay? So, now we can grab this right here and go back to our by dimension. I'm really sorry if I'm all over the place. This is actually just, <laughs> this is just really crazy and fascinating, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? It's also a little confusing. Um, okay, so now if the dimension is unlocked, okay, then we will buy it. Cool. Uh, this is at ID. And now we need to set the next one to true. And I think it's unlocked after we buy 10. I believe so. Let's see. Nope, it's after we buy the first one. Okay, so now we can do if uh, dimensions unlocked ID plus one and and ID is not equal to, or we'll just say less than eight, because we don't want to do this for the eighth dimension, because there is no ninth dimension. Or maybe. Heavy, spill the beans. Okay, so in here, we want to be able to set this to true. Okay, cool. So now we will do this unlock system, and I think that will look pretty cool. And we are eventually going to finish this up. This is a big game. <laughs> we only have so little, though. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, uh, we also need to reset these unlocks, so we're going to set... Uh, data.dimensions unlocked to a new bool, size 8. Perfect. 
Okay. Now, we need to finish these cost molts. So I only have eight, but I feel like I should just keep going. I think I'm just going to cheat this in. I hate cheating, but I need to know all these costs. Okay. So let's just keep going. Okay. Uh, we're getting a bunch of this done. So we got five. Okay, so we have 1E13. Okay. So I'm going to keep adding this. So the base is 1E13. Ten. Okay, I had a feeling it was E10. It was either 11 or 10. Okay, cool. Let's keep buying this. One, two, th oh, shoot. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, eighteen. And I know the production is the same, okay? I know that for a fact by now. So we have one, eighteen, one, thirty, okay? So what is this? This is uh, 12. Yeah, okay. And I believe the next one's going to be E14. If not, E16 or 15. Okay. Okay, so we have 24. 24. And the cost, oh, it's 139. So it's 15. Okay. We have all of our costs. Perfecto. We can now move on. Okay, so let's see. We have E3, E4, E5, E6, and then E8. Can I type E8? Does that work? No. <laughs> 1E8, 1E10, 1E12, 1E15. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, and now for our base costs, we have E6, E9, 1e9, 1e13, and 13, 18, 29, or 24. 18, 1 24. Cool. Um, <laughs> we just need to make sure we don't have any fours around here. This dimension count, we need to increase this to six because we don't add on to the eighth, all right? Not till later on, far later on. Okay, because there is no ninth dimension. Again, Heavy, I know that you're hiding that secret from us. There's there's definitely ninth dimensions. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, I think this is all good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's... Okay, this is, let's see. Does this dimension shift look like it's going to work? I don't know. We will test that theory. Also, let's see. What happens if I, oh, yeah, see, I can still buy these. I'm not supposed to. Also, I need to buy this. Uh, I need to do the buy until 10. So let's do that. So let's do buy dimension. Uh, buy until 10. Okay, now it's the same thing, except we need to grab the dimension cost until 10 right here okay same thing here dimension levels uh so dimension levels is equal to zero so we just ignore this here we add we add the count to however many levels we have now okay so however many we have now so let's say we have five or let's say we have four we are buying six more. So we do 10 minus the current amount of levels we have now. Okay. And yeah, we have this unlocked thing here. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, we also need to increase the boost like that. Perfect. So that was pretty easy. Pretty easy. We also need to finish the rest of these dimensions here. Okay, and then I think we are done. Oh, we need to do the UI for the dimension shift. Okay, so I'm going to assign the buttons now. So it's buy until 10. Uh, okay, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3. 
Okay, and now in our dimensions manager, we want to drag all of our um, our game objects, but we don't have them all yet, so let's finish that up first. So we have dimension four, five, six, seven, eight. Dimension five. Dimension six. Kind of run out of UI now. We got barely a little space for the dimension shifts down here. I mean, it doesn't take that much space. Just like two more lines, which I think they'll fit perfectly. Barely perfectly. But we're running out of space fast. Wow. It's crazy. The UI here is just so snug, and I could probably like move things up too. Alrighty. Oh, we also need to do the Bimax all, which I'm going to do later on. Okay, so now we have all of our game objects. Let's just drag everything in here. Dimension 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now we got to finish our buttons here. And we got to change all these numbers again. Bummer. Okay, so now we have our dimension, our dimensions here. We need to do uh, dimension shifts right here. Or dimension boost. Dim, what? Wait a minute, I thought this was called Dimension Shift. Huh, I'm so confused now. You know what, I'm just going to continue this as a Dimension Shift. I I swear that's what it was called, Dimension Shift. I, you know what, it's whatever. <laughs> so at least I know it's a Dimension Shift or what it actually is, then I think we're okay. So we have to have the same thing except this is not a prefab so I'm gonna unpack this completely this is, I'm just gonna call this dimension shift whatever and this is gonna be spaced out just a little bit more yeah see we're barely out of room down there okay that's okay let's see what's this let's divide it by okay there we go we'll okay we'll share equal space with dim uh, antimatter galaxies even though it looks a little bigger. Okay, so this is called Dimension Boost. Dimension Boost. We haven't done the cost text yet. Okay, so now I'm going to assign the Dimension Shift right here by dimension shift to the button right here also I still have to do the colors so I will do that as well okay okay I'm really scared to try this but let's go ahead I haven't done any of the text yet so we will I'm expecting some errors oh snap so now the thing is that it doesn't like uh, I'm going to have to find a way, I mean, it's obviously not that hard, but to have it move down with it. So I will eventually learn how to do that. But I'm just going to make it so it moves to the, uh, to the top of this right here, which shouldn't be too bad. Um, okay. So let's buy one. It sh oh, it didn't even unlock the other one. And it's not producing any per second. So that's not good. And this is a zero right here. So I guess the reason why this is happening is because for some reason this dimension boost right here, this dimension shift is making this a zero. So let's check out our dimensions manager. Let's see, is it in here? I don't think it is. Oh, dimension boost. Okay. So yeah, this is zero, but it should be plus one. So shift boost, shift boost is also zero. Why is this happening? Oh, I, I remember why. It's because we didn't actually set the shifts or did we? Oh, yeah, we didn't even run this method. <laughs> well, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, don't forget to, to run this. Okay. And this buy method, that's good. Also, let's move that back. Okay, let's add this text real quick. So this will be up here. So this is a public text uh, dimension... I uh, know this is a TM Pro, right? Yeah, TMP text, dimension, shift text. Okay. Okay, so dimension boost, uh, data dot dimension shift, uh, dimension shifts, yeah. 
And then this will be requires the cost. Okay, so requ requires the cost right here. And we need to have the name here, dimensions. Okay, so this is tricky, the dimensions part right here. So I think what we're gonna do here is do the same thing with the dimension shifts here. So let's see, where's our names right here? Dimension names. So we have dimension names at index. Uh, so we have zero shifts, right? So we wanna start at zero, one, two, three, right? So this is dimension shifts plus three. Okay, so now the problem here is that the index is, um, it's big, right? So what I'm gonna do here is use, a, I'm gonna use a question mark operator, okay? So if, uh, yeah. So if dimension shift is less than eight, yeah, no, if it's greater than or equal than eight, no, it's just greater than eight, right? Yeah, greater than seven. Okay, greater than seven. Then we are going to set this to seven. Otherwise, we are going to cast dimension shifts as an int and add it by three. Also, this actually, no, this should be four. Dimension shift should be four. Okay, because of the plus three here. And we can, I guess we can get rid of these parentheses here. And now, so we have this, and now we need to access the cost here, which is pretty easy. We have the variable set and done, like that. Cool. Hopefully, we'll cross our fingers, it should work. Okay, so don't forget to drag your your dimension shift text right here. And let's see what this looks like. And this should say one times. Yep, yeah, perfect. Uh, it says dimension four, dimension, dimensions. Okay, well that didn't really work out as planned in it. <laughs> well, so let's see, it says requires 20 dimension. So where is this dimension coming from? So we have the cost. We also have dimensions, dimension. What the heck is this? Dimensions for dimension dimensions. <laughs> what happened here? Wow. This like really screwed up. Okay. Um so it's clearly something with this right here. I don't know what went wrong. Oh, it's just dimensions. Oh, we forgot to do dimension names. Okay, well, let's just quickly restart this since importing doesn't take that long, and I'm really curious to see if this will work. Also, I'm really sorry if this is an extremely watch, uh, extremely long video. If you're still watching, uh, thank you very much. Yay! Okay, so now if we reset, it shouldn't do anything. Yep, perfect. Uh, it still didn't unlock though. That's not good. So if we go to our scripts, uh, our bool are unlocked right here. So it says the first one's unlocked, right? So I think the issue here is that when we're buying, it's not unlocking the right one. So let's see, it should be unlocking the next one, right? So we need to do ID plus one for the dimensions unlocked bool array. All right, so let this load and then I will play this. Now when we buy this, we should unlock the next one. Oh, man. It still doesn't want us to buy this one. Okay. I see. Okay, so the re so now we're checking to see if this is true. So we want to make sure that if it's false. So if it's false, then we need to make it true. We need to unlock it, okay? Now we can't just set it to true every time, but that's kind of a, just a redundant call, especially when it's already true, when we can just only do it if it's false. The smallest bit of optimization. Okay, so now it works. Perfect. And let's try this uh, by until 10. So we'll do that at 20. Let's speed this up a bit. Nah, and I can't drag it. Dang. Okay, it's all, it's all right. It's speeding up. Okay, so now let's get the 20. And if we buy this, it should work. Ah, oh, it doesn't reset the co it doesn't reset this though. That's the thing. Um, okay, that's okay. Let's see, how do we fix this? So buy until 10. We need to set level back to zero. So let's grab this right here. We need to reset level back to zero. That's the only thing we need to do here. 
Um, okay, so let's try to get to this fourth dimension here. I'm going to speed this up. See, I know our, our antimatter is very off, but it's okay. I'm just wanting to test this. Oh, we have fifth dimension, so that's not good. We don't want to see fifth dimension. So now we we're able to buy this because... Now, I didn't add that if statement in the buy because this should not appear at all. So we're just going to completely ignore this fifth dimension for now. And now we should be able to reset this once we have 20. Okay, good. It doesn't reset early. So we're going to set this to 13. Let's buy these. And now we should be able to dimension shift. So this should be set to two times and everything should be back to normal. Awesome. It works. Yes. We got this dimension shift to work. <laughs> awesome. This makes me so happy. This is so much fun. So now let's try getting another dimension shift right here. Okay. So I'm going to speed the, or I'm not going to speed this up. I'm just going to buy all these. Uh, okay. So let's just buy up to the 20th dimension, which we can. Uh, we can just buy this. Okay. So let's buy to the. Okay. So let's buy it to the 20th, fifth dimension. And then this should be four times. This should be two times. So let's try that out. Okay, so that's four times. Awesome. That is two times. And the next one should be one times. Okay, this is speeding up. Oh, yes, it works. Yes! So, it feels so good. <laughs> that is the best feeling ever. One of the best feelings is when you just get something and you're just like, oh, I really hope it works. Cool, so we just need to fix this thing with the uh, dimensions unlocked, right? Uh, let's see, how do we do this? So I'm going to add an if statement. Uh, and um, so we need to, this is based on our dimension shift. So let's say we were trying to unlock five, right? So five, we need our dimension shift to be one or else we can't see at all. So... If ID, no, if dimension shifts is greater than, yeah, is greater than or equal than ID plus four, plus four, that's not right. So if the dimension shift is greater than or equal than plus four. No, no, it's not right. Uh, it needs to be the opposite. So if it's less than, so if dimension shifts, let's say if it's zero, so if zero is less than five, hmm. So let's say we're buying the third, the fourth one. So we have zero, one, two, three. So we have three. We want to buy the next one. So if dimension shifts is, uh, so right now it's at zero. So we're trying to compare it to three. Let's, let's do this in a notepad. Okay. So let's say uh, dim shift and uh, ID. So let's ID. Okay. So let's say dimension shift is zero, right? And we're trying to buy the, the fourth one, right? So that's index uh, three. So now the next one is four, right? I know this is a weird formatting thing. I, I don't know, I'm just typing whatever. We don't want to see the fourth one because we want this to be greater than uh, one, right? So if this is one, then yeah, this will work. This is no and this is a yes, okay? So I think we just need to calculate if the next one, hmm, next one minus three, if dimension shift is, if dimension shift is greater than or equal than our ID minus two, then I think that should work, right? Does that sound correct? I don't know. Let's try it. 
And we will have to try this for both dimension shifts. And I will need, yeah, we, we can finally do the buy until 10 now too, by the ways. So let's just test both of those things real quick. And let's see, does that work? Perfect, it works. So now if we buy this, we should not be able to see the fifth. Perfect. Awesome. We're getting somewhere, guys. Okay, so let's uh, dimension shift. So now we should only see up to the fifth. So let's go. Also need to add keybinds, too. What's going on here? Oh, I need to add the same thing, I think. Yeah, there we go. That works just fine now. Cool. Well, let's see what's going on here. Why is this? Okay, let's just add this to the right here. All right. I think that's the only thing we need to do here. Yeah. Okay. So now if we do dimension 10, it should work. So let's try that real quick. So I've already done this. And I feel like I should try until 10 or eighth dimension and then I'm gonna stop there okay because the cost is gonna be constantly at 20 but I just want to make sure we don't get any uh, errors so let's try this so yep if we buy 10 it works perfectly I need to add keybinds so badly also this is one decimal that's not right okay so we have our seventh dimension awesome so let's do that and now we should be able to skip right to this. Oh, yep, we have a we have a an error. Let's see where is this happening. Buy until ten. Yeah, see, this is what I was saying. So we need to do if less than seven, right? Because there is yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so that should fix that issue. And now if we keep going. So now it says 25th dimension, so that's not correct. Uh, let's just keep trying. This should say 8th dimensions now. So now we can't get through this. I think that's just because we got to... Okay, so we have to have more 5th dimensions maybe? I don't know. That's interesting. But I think for the most part this works. Let's see, I got a text dinner start heading to kitchen okay all right i'll be back after this i'm gonna fix a few bugs so i thought i was recording the entire time when i came back but i guess not so i'll kind of explain what my changes were so i was exploring the dimensional sacrifice which i will do probably in the next episode next episode or two maybe next one um but i was explaining how the notation method is now it now looks like this here i'll kind of bring this to a new line so i actually forgot that no, big double has two variables which is the mantisa and exponents and that gives us the ability to use n because mantisa is a double and exponent is a long so i decided to change it back to the n right here and um yeah we can't use it for this one because we do num right here and this is still a big double here, so we can't use n here. Um, I created this second op uh, optional parameter for this one right here because I already have methods with the number for the first decimal, which is this one right here. So I added a second one because most likely we won't be able to change, we won't need to change this one unless there's a setting for that. And that will adjust how many decimals we see for the exponent system. So we got that. I fixed some stuff in the by dimensions here such as this line. I th oh, I'm still trying this one here and this one here. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I created a, um, a button here for the, for the, the, for when you can start or for when you can shift. I created a temp variable with this uh, right here, which is what we used um, for the text originally. So for getting the dimension names, and then uh, we set the color equal to if we can. So basically, if we can do a dimension shift, then we set it to green. Otherwise, we set it to red. And I think that's everything I did while I was gone. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything. Oh, yeah. I also finished the, the scaling for the dimension shift, shift cost, which is 20 plus 
um, dimension shift minus 4 times 15, okay? So now I have explored that. Um, it adds every 15 for now. I'm at one, I was at 110 at, one, at some point and it kept increasing by 15. So we're gonna stick with that unless we see something different. Okay, so let's go back to Unity and let's run this. So the bug I was trying to solve was this, um, the eighth dimension not showing up or it was ca causing some uh, out of bounds error, which was really interesting. So let's keep going. Also, see, this is what the comma system looks like. Looks really neat. It's way easier than I thought. These buttons are a little small, but it's okay. I wish I had the Bimax. Okay, so now, see, we have, we have uh, 28 dimensions, and hopefully it'll unlock properly. Oh, man. Still, why? Okay. You know what, it's fine. So now if we buy here, it increases by 15. So now we have dimension shifts for all of these. Okay, so we have 34, or 32, 16, 8. And then the next one should be 4, and then 2. It works perfectly. Very happy with the results so far. Yeah, so we have the two right here. Perfect, so it's like a ladder now. And it's looking pretty nice. Okay, so we need to fix, what is this error? Like, I don't get it. If we get rid of, if we make it so we can't access this right here, then we cannot add the eighth, right? It's really, really weird. <laughs> so I think it's, I think it's this right here. This array right here. Maybe. So yeah, it's trying to access another one right here, right? So I think we need to add another if statement. So what I can do here is move this ID right here. So basically, it's gonna check for um, if the, it's gonna check for this first, right? And if this is false, then all of, all of this is false, right? It won't check for here. It won't check for here. So then we won't get this. They won't get this out of bounds error. Hopefully, if we still do. I, and in a future episode, then I'm just going to have to add another if statement above this, and hopefully that won't be the case. All right. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, heavy if you're here. Hello, welcome to the video series. I hope you enjoyed it as well as much as I did. Um, comment your feedback and everything and everything below. Check out the Patreon in the description if you want to support my channel, and check out my other videos in the top right corner. Anyway, see you guys in another video. Peace.